We have our UVs. Um, they're good for more than just telling Maya where to put textures. You can actually use them yourself to know where to put textures. Uh, and the way that we're going to do this is we have to export what's called a UV snapshot. Uh, to do that, in the UV editor, you go to the image tab, and right at the bottom is the option for UV snapshot. Click on that, and you get this dialog box that pops open. Uh, you can choose where to save it. So I'm going to save it in my source images folder. And again, it wouldn't hurt to do a subfolder for each individual object, but I'll just leave it here. And uh, set your file name. So I will call this mug uv's underscore demo because this is my the second version. That's not how you spell mug. There we go. Mug. Uh, click save. And then image format. Uh, you can do PNG. You can do JPEG. Um, I like PNG because it has an alpha channel. Um, but I'll do JPEG just to show you a, an additional thing in Photoshop. Uh, you can also set your size. Uh, here I would stay um, in kind of the, the, the normal multiples. So 2048 is pretty standard. You can go half of that to 1024 by 1024. Uh, if you need to go to 4K, one I would say do that sparingly. Uh, but 4K would be 4096 by 4096. Keep it square. Um, and again, 1024, 2048, or 4096. For something really small and in the background, you could even go down to 512 by 512. Uh, but we'll stick with 2048 in this instance. So I've got that, and I'm going to click Apply and Close. Oh, you need to select a valid object. That's a good idea. So I'll go to Object Mode, select my mug, and then click Apply and Close. And now it makes it. So that saved it where I told it to, which in my case is in my Source Images folder and mug uv's demo.jpg. And it looks like this. Oh, there is one other option in that menu that I want to point out real quick before I forget. Although I already did forget. Um, is you have this edge color option. So this will become uh, kind of clear here in a moment what that, why you would want to change that. But I've got my mug uv's demo image. Uh, and now I can open that up in Photoshop. Or your image editor of choice. Um, but I'm using Photoshop. So this is, again, that obviously the same image. But now we can use that to uh, uh, create our textures and apply our textures. So I'm going to double click on this, click OK to unlock that layer. And I'm going to duplicate it um, and just turn one off and just basically creating a backup for myself. And um, now we need to decide if we want to use an image texture or if we want to paint one ourselves. Uh, we'll start with a image texture. So I'm going to go to one of those texture websites. Uh, texture Haven seems pretty good. I'll actually open this up so you can see it as well. And let's grab a maybe a metal. No, I don't want diamond plated mug. That'd be weird. What do we have for painted metal? All right, painted metal mug. That sounds good. So I'm going to download just the uh, diffuse, which is also the color. Texture Haven gives you all of these different maps, which is great and wonderful. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to download the diffuse, and I, I'm doing the 2K size, 2048 by 2048. So I will download the. Uh, oh, the PNG is so much larger. I'm going to download the JPEG. Click Save File. And what I want to do, let me go to my images. Uh, it downloads to the desktop, so I want to immediately move it into my Source Images folder. Okay, that's where all of my textures are going to live. And you can see already this is starting to fill up pretty quickly. But here's my green metal texture. So I've got that in place. Now I'm going to go into Photoshop, uh, and I'm going to open that texture. Uh, 
here and here. Nope, not there. Here. Green metal. Open. Okay. Now this texture is already wonderfully prepared for use in 3D. Um, next time we meet, I will talk about preparing textures that are not already great. But what makes this texture good is, one, it's square. Two, it's good resolution. Um, three, there are no obvious shadows or lighting effects on the texture. Okay, you don't want that because if you've got, uh, like, if you've got bricks on a sunny day, you've got that those really obvious shadows, but then you use that texture in a scene that's not sunny, like say it's at night, it's not going to make any sense. It's going to be confusing and it's not going to look realistic. All right, so you don't want any lighting baked into your textures. You want to be able to have that full control yourself. Um, there's also no lens distortion. Like if you're using a fisheye lens to shoot your texture images, don't, uh, because you're going to get a lot of distortion. It's not. It's going to be confusing as hell. Um, there's also no vignetting. All right, it's a nice even tone all the way across. This texture also is taken straight on. All right, it's not taken at a glancing angle. All right. Um, again, if you if you take it straight on and apply apply it to the surface, then as the camera moves around. It will feel natural. Um, yeah, so next week we'll, or in two weeks, we'll talk about how to compensate for images that aren't perfect, but for now we're just going to use this. So I'm going to Command A to select everything and Command C to copy it, go over to my mug um, file and paste it in. Okay, now I've got my copy of my UVs. I'm going to move that up on top and set the blending mode to uh, screen. So I can see my UVs and my texture. If you saved it out as a PNG, you've got the alpha channel already. You don't have to change the blending mode. But I saved it out as a JPEG to show you this very thing. Um, so you can use these UVs now as reference, right? So if you're wondering, oh, I, you know, what part of the texture do I need to um, adjust in order to get, uh, you know, if I want to put a logo on there? Um, now I know where the front of my mug is, and I can uh, move my logo into position accordingly. Uh, another thing to, to take into consideration here, this texture is, um, well, okay, the front of the mug loops around and is a continuous surface, but we have a seam here. And so we're going to notice that, and I will act I'll show you, let's bring this into Maya, and, and I'll show you kind of how these seams are behaving. So to bring it into Maya, all we have to do is export this as a JPEG uh, or PNG or TIFF um, and apply it like we did earlier, like you would any other texture. So I'm going to turn off my UVs so they're not part of the texture. And then uh, Command Option Shift S is Save for Web, uh, which is if you go to File and export safer web legacy it's a legacy function uh, there are other ways to do it but I like safer web I'm familiar with it and it works for me so in safer web you can set how you want to save it JPEG uh, PNG I'm gonna stick with JPEG I'm gonna keep the quality at hundred and I'm gonna keep my image size at hundred uh, percent I'm gonna click Save and I'm in the right folder and I'm just gonna name this mug underscore color and click save uh, oh, okay I'm gonna save it as a different name because I already have one of those color underscore demo so it's unique okay so it's saved out All right right here and it's the exact same as the same thing as the image that I downloaded uh, that's not the image I downloaded that's the image I downloaded but it's just a starting point so now we can go to Maya um, I'm going to get rid of the UV or minimize the UV editor for now. Right click on the. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know what that is. Don't do that. Weird drawing error. We're going to right click on the mug, assign a new material, Arnold Standard Surface. We'll call this Mug Demo Mat for Material. And now I'm going to, in the color, Click the checkbox, choose a file, and navigate to my 
mug color demo, click open. Now, you're not going to see anything immediately, so you need to hit 6 on the number pad, and that will show you your texture mapped view, and you can see it applied in the viewport. Now, this isn't perfect because it's super glossy, and this metal it shouldn't be that glossy, so this is where things like specular maps um, and bump maps come into play. But the color looks great. Um, you can also see where there are seams, right? So there are various things you can do to, get to hide seams on top of, you know, where you actually place them. So this seam on the back, which I believe is right here. Where do we put that seam? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so yeah, that's where the seam is. In the UV editor, if you turn on uh, the image preview right here, now you can see it. And you can kind of see exactly how it's mapped. Um, but yeah, so this this seam actually is fairly well hidden. The ones around the um, handle are pretty well hidden too. So overall, I think we did a pretty good job of hiding seams. Um, but you need to be careful about that because if for whatever reason uh, your texture is nice and consistent, um, but then you do something like that. Oh, that's not nearly as strong as it was supposed to be. Why is this a dumb brush? Go to a regular brush. There we go. Okay, we are using just all of the settings. I don't want all of the settings. I just want a regular brush. I don't know Photoshop nearly as well as John. So I'm just going to I don't know. Okay, whatever. Um, so if you do that and your your color map changes, you're going to see that uh, here I'll just quick save out a different version of this. Oh, let me turn off my UVs. You will inevitably forget to turn off your UVs as you're exporting these. So be prepared. Let's call that two. Jump into Maya. Select that, and uh, I'm going to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to open up my hyper shade. All right, I'm going to go to my material, select my image node, and just reload that with. Demo 2. Okay, so this is the really obvious um, seam. All right, so there's where the seam is. Uh, and that's what you want to avoid. So be careful with what textures you choose and where you place them with the UVs. Um, I'm going to load back the other one so that we don't have that. But yeah, that one, that one actually looks pretty good. So that's how you can then use uh, UVs to lay them out. Now let's put a logo on top. Um, just to demonstrate that part of it. So I'm going to delete that layer, turn on my UVs, and I'm going to place this logo, my company logo. And so I can scale it down to the right size and I can position it uh, let's say I think here. So if I, in Maya, if I go one, two, three, four faces over is the center, well, kind of the front of the mug. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. That's the front. So I will set it right about there. And then I didn't perfectly straighten out my UV, so I'm going to rotate this a little bit, try to even it up. Hit return. All right, turn off my UVs, save out another version, or I could even just save over it, that's fine. Save, replace, and then in Maya, we just need to reload the image. Whoops. Open. And now we have our logo on our mug.